Well, I, I, I think the reading today was an encouragement. I do, too. I don't, I don't think I need to reinvent the wheel. I, I think we need to realize that we have the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God in our hands. And it has already been victorious over the Antichrist and the synagogue of Satan. It has already been victorious. We, we, we know the victory is already won. The Protestant Reformers demonstrated it for us. All we have to do is pick up that Bible again. Read it for ourselves for the first time. Forget what the pastors and the preachers have taught you about it, because they've been trained in Jesuit seminaries. They have you believing that the Antichrist is not the papacy. They have you believing that the Antichrist is a single individual that won't even come until after the rapture. Okay? I mean, I mean, they have deceived. They single-handed. Futurism has single-handedly destroyed Protestantism. It's time for us to realize that it is a fantastic lie. And as sweet as it may sound, it is as bitter as wormwood. And now we need to do what comes naturally. Having rejected the lie of futurism, we simply return to historicism and the written word of God and we hold it back up and identify the papacy as the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the little horn of Daniel, the Antichrist, and proclaim it from the rooftops and tell Rome to get her hands off of our government, get her hands off of our preachers. Look, look, we know the results of what that did during the Protestant Reformation. It overturned all the governments of Europe. Not a shot needed to be fired. It was Rome that retaliated with weaponry. And what were they shooting at? The Bible and those who read it. But they still championed the Bible. That's our answer. That's our answer. Repudiate the Protestant Reformation. It is a grievous error that could not have ever happened were it not for for, for uh, futurism. We've clearly understood the error of futurism. Now we need to attack its result. The ecumenical movement to reunite to the, to the, to the Roman Catholic Church, to elevate the papacy back to the diabolical status that it, that it enjoyed during the Dark Ages. I mean, the answer so, seems so simple to me. It's... Uh, Almost common sense. It is, and uh, we 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 don't need a pep talk. We've we've already got the example of the Protestant reformers to spur us on. Look, Martin Luther and the Protestant reformers were an extreme minority in Roman Catholic Europe during the Dark Ages. God doesn't even need a man to stand up in his defense. But he chose Martin Luther and the Protestant Reformers, and he empowered them. He spread the go- the message of the gospel all over Europe and liberated the whole continent. And, and what is what about that is so difficult for us to uh, understand? Well, it's what 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 is it about that that is, seems so difficult for us to duplicate? I'll just say it this way. Futurism is the victory of Romanism over Protestantism. Shall we let that happen? Not me. It's not boastful or anything. I'm just speaking common sense. No one in his right mind would keep still about the error of futurism and allow Rome to conduct a bloody inquisition against God's people in this country, just like she did over Europe. No one in his right mind. I mean, it's a no-brainer. We don't need encouragement. We've got all the encouragement we need. All we need is a little spiritual fortitude. I never knew who the Antichrist was. That's because they don't preach about the Antichrist in the churches today. 
they did in the churches at the time of Henry Grant and Guinness and at the time of the Reformers and at the time before the Protestant Reformation in the Waldenses, the Huguenots, the Hussites, the Lawlers, the Hus- uh, uh, the, the Paulicians, and all these other people that we named. They did preach against Antichrist. That is the true faith of Jesus Christ. Not only that Jesus is the Christ, but that the Pope is the Antichrist. And here today, nothing is known of the Antichrist. Nothing is known of the papacy being the Antichrist. Therefore, no one preaches against him. No one exposes his idolatries and his blasphemies and his use of the civil powers to to tyrannize God's people. We're all tyrannized. We're all made slaves in a system that is designed from the get-go to enslave us because the kings of the earth worship the dragon right along with the papacy. And God's people are unable to make war with him. Only Christ can make war with him. The only thing that we have, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are spiritual, spiritual for the pulling down of strongholds. What stronghold is he talking about? The Antichrist, the papacy. And the union of church and state, the Roman Catholic Church-State, together with the kings of the earth, are the mechanism by which Satan overthrows the gospel and kills the saints of the Most High. None of that is talked about in the churches today. They're all taught about a future Antichrist that comes seven years before Christ's return. They don't have a clue that the papacy has always been and always will be the Antichrist of the Bible. There's virtually no Protestantism left in this country anymore. No Protestantism left in the world anymore. That's why programs like this are classified as hate speech, as anti-Roman Catholic bigotry. We have not kept the, 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 the scriptures written in the book of Revelation. Christians once knew what the book of Revelation spoke about. They expounded it in all of their Protestant writings. They saw in it the papacy and the Roman Catholic Church, the great apostasy, the great falling away. But people are clueless today about what the, what the book of Revelation speaks about. It isn't that the book of Revelation was never understood. It's that it's just not understood today. And why? Because the counter-reformation of the Roman Catholic Church led by the Jesuits has destroyed any knowledge of of how the Protestant reformers and the true Christians throughout history interpreted the prophecies of John in the book of Revelation. What exactly is the book of Revelation? It's the exposure of the Antichrist, the counterfeit Christ. And it exposes the history of the of of, of the true church being persecuted by that Antichrist church. That's what the book of Revelation is all about, things that should shortly come to pass. And from the time of the writing of that revelation in 95 A.D. by the Apostle John, which was just the successor the successor of, of Daniel, John is just, just continuing the visions of Daniel about the little horn, the man of sin. And, uh, and from the time of the writing of that book, it began to come to pass. The papacy took power right after the fall of the Caesars, which was in the process of the doing at the time of the writing of the book of Revelation and the proper, and the papacy since the uh, third century, uh, the 300s AD, uh, rose in its place and began to persecute the, the saints even worse than the Caesars of pagan Rome did. So it could actually be said that in the seminaries they are just not teaching the Bible, right? That's exactly right. They're, they're teaching a lie. They're teaching a lie that obscures the truth, the truth of history, the truth of prophecy, the truth that the Protestant Reformers knew. They're telling a lie that the papacy never was the Antichrist. They don't even mention the papacy. They just talk about a future individual that comes just seven years or three and a half years, whichever you are, pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib, this Antichrist comes and signs a peace treaty with Israel, and then in the midst of that seven-week or the seven-year period of time, he causes the sacrifices and oblations to cease. It's all a lie. 
Those prophecies were fulfilled by Jesus Christ. His ministry lasted seven years. He was anointed by John in the river. He began his ministry at the age of 30 years old. Three and a half years later, he was crucified, causing the sacrifices and oblations to cease because God ripped the veil of the temple. The priest of the high priest of Israel could not make atonement for Israel with the veil of the temple ripped. And then three and a half years later, the, the apostles in the spirit of Christ witnessed the blood covenant, the covenant in his blood for three and a half years. And finally, Stephen testifying to the Sanhedrin that they had wickedly, slew their, their, wickedly slain their own Messiah, finally understood what Stephen was saying, and they ripped their clothes. But instead of confessing, <clears throat> instead of repenting of that wickedness, they stoned Stephen to shut him up. And then the gospel went to the Gentiles. And after that, God sent the Roman 10th Legion, the, the, the Prince Titus, the, the son of the reigning Caesar at the time, Vespasian, to destroy the city and the sanctuary. No more animal sacrifices. There's no need for Jerusalem. There's no need for a temple. No more animal sacrifices. You either take Jesus or leave him. That goes for Jew and Gentile alike. There's only one means of salvation for mankind. The lamb which was slain from the foundation of the world, the lamb that was slain in the Garden of Eden with which Christ clothed Adam and Eve with coats of skins, There's no other sacrifice. There's no other propitiation for sin but the blood of Jesus Christ. The age of grace began at the Garden of Eden. It continues today for both Jew and Gentile. And all of this future malarkey that is taught in the churches today simply serves to exonerate the history of the papacy, the the entire history of the true Christian church, Uh, the true body of believers who were slain by the Antichrist and focuses us on a pipe dream at the end of time, 2,000 years later. It presumes that the book of Revelation completely skips over the entire 2,000-year history of the body of Christ. It leaves... It leaves the first century, skips over the entire church age, and then picks up again at the end of time. It's all a lie. So God is actually telling us in the book of Revelation that reading and understanding the book of Revelation is a blessing to us, right? Yes, and the Protestant reformers and all the true Bible-believing Christians prior to us did understand, and they kept those scriptures. They saw them fulfilled in history as the history of the of the, the, the false church and the true church existed for 2,000 years, the false church killing the saints, persecuting the saints, wearing out the saints until the present day. But we've forgotten all that. No church today teaches what the Protestant Reformers taught. No church today teaches what the Waldenses taught, that the papacy is the Antichrist. He's the one who wears out the saints and kills the saints. He's the one who who soaks the earth with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. They're all looking for a future Antichrist. They're looking for a future fulfillment. And since that exonerates the papacy, now the gates are open to reunite with the Roman Catholic Church, and that's what defines Christianity today, ecumenism. The unification of not just the Protestant churches back under the authority of the papacy, but the, 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 the gathering in of all the religions of the world, all the pagan religions of the world under the Pope's authority. That's the ultimate goal of the ecumenical movement that began at that Vatican Council II in the 1960s during President Kennedy's administration. And because the Protestants now no longer protest the Pope, They no longer protest the Antichrist. They're reuniting with the Roman Catholic Church, thinking it is the Church of Jesus Christ, and that the Protestant Reformation was a grievous error against God's rightful throne in Rome. And and so they, they wait for a future Antichrist when they're getting in bed with the Antichrist. It's it's the greatest deception since the Garden of Eden, and it shouldn't fool anyone, but it says it has fooled the entire Christian world. 
Well, God said he would send a strong delusion, and that's it. That the Pope is a Christian? That's delusion. That the Pope is the vicar of Christ, the replacement of the Son of God on earth? The legitimate voice of God on earth is the papacy? That's the strong delusion. And those who believe that lie, their names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you walk into any church and read that quote from Martin Luther, that the Pope is the Antichrist, and that you abhor him and resist him as the counterfeit Christ, you'll be ushered out of the churches. Well, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. You can't serve two masters. Surely they go to the church, they read the scriptures, they learn about Jesus Christ and his sacrifice and propitiation for them. But then they're turned around and told that the papacy, we must unite with the papacy, the Antichrist. You can't serve two masters, and that's what they're doing. 